Hello, one and all. Good to have you with us on Red Barn Radio. I'm Brad Becker. This is season number 19 of Red Barn Radio, and tonight we welcome you to show 736. <laughs> our staff and our artists so appreciate that you continue to visit the Red Barn Radio YouTube and Twitch channels to enjoy these Wednesday live streams. Tonight we have an evening of good old-fashioned old-time tunes with Eli Delbridge from Perryville, Kentucky. Eli's been playing banjo for well over a decade now and really took to the percussive claw hammer or drop thumb style of playing native to West Virginia and East Kentucky. Playing with friends and family, Eli and the band grew a following in neighboring counties and throughout the region. We're glad you're here with us for a great evening of music. Welcome Eli Delbridge to the Red Barn stage. Good evening and welcome to Red Barn Radio. Wherever in the world you're listening, welcome to Roots Music Southern Style. 
Thanks to WEKU, Red Barn Radio's official radio partner, NPR for Central and Eastern Kentucky. Listen online at WEKU.org. Red Barn Radio is supported by Visit Lex, Lexington, Kentucky's Convention and Visitors Bureau. More information on what Lexington has to offer is at visitlex.com. LexArts, Lexington, Kentucky's premier cultural development, advocacy, and fundraising organization, working for the development of a strong and vibrant arts community as a means of enhancing the quality of life in Central Kentucky. Follow Red Barn Radio on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Here's the host of Red Barn Radio to tell us more about tonight's performers. Eli Delbridge is our guest this evening on Red Barn Radio. Eli and his wife, Leanna, love old scratchy records and field recordings of Tennessee, Virginia, and Kentucky tunes. They love playing their music to audiences who, in turn, appreciate the feel of a good old barn dance like the ones happening throughout the South and Midwest in the 50s and 40s, and even long before that. Eli is joined uh, by the twin fiddles of his wife and his sister, and also good friends Matt Lorimer and Josh Wrinkle on uh, guitar. Matt Lorimer on mandolin and Josh Wrinkle on guitar. Welcome back, Eli Delbridge and his band.
rockin' and I can't stop rockin' with a hole in my stockin' Well, damn stone out, hole in my stockin' way down in Alabama tune called old time picking that last one we did uh that's a i think that song dates back to the 1850s i believe abraham lincoln used that one on the campaign trail uh, so uh, it's a good one so we like to use it and uh, it's pretty catchy but this one here is old time picking i think uh i believe ralph stanley did this one back in the 1970s so it's been a while since we've done this but we're gonna give it a shot see where it goes Shady Grove. The key of C goes. This one here, uh, it's an old one to, from uh, Eastern Kentucky, I believe, Southwest Virginia. I 
song uh, it's one of my favorites actually it's called down the road somewhere now uh, this is one of the first tunes I learned how to play and I heard one of my favorites play it Ralph Stanley and I, I tried to do a lot of his stuff and didn't sound as good as him but I tried anyway so Welcome, listeners. Uh, you're listening to Red Barn Radio, and our guest this evening is Elias Delbridge. He uh, lives in, in Perryville. Uh, 
Great to have you guys here. Elias, yes, finally, sir. huh? We, I mean, we feel like we've been waiting for this for a while. We've talked on the phone and it's been a good bit, yeah. emailed and all that stuff. Yeah. So I, I, had, two, um, I had two big surprises today. Um, one, one surprise is that um, is something I heard on TV, and that's that evidently there are people who uh, vaccinate people who have gotten the COVID vaccine and, and can now stick metal objects to their uh, to their head, <laughs> and they actually stay there. I, so this hey. is just something. It happens. It's happening somewhere. So yeah. I've, I've hey, heard that's that. A, that's good news. And I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. I mean, you don't have to, have to lose. <laughs> uh, and then the other surprise is uh, that that you're not from Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah. I know that's a shocker to, to that some is folks. A shocker. Yeah. I'm from uh, actually quite a bit of ways. I'm from Oregon. That's where I was born, down in a little town called Corvallis, Oregon, uh, down in Benton County. And uh, I didn't live there very long. Uh, moved out of there when I was seven, I believe. And uh, my dad works for the government, so we kind of moved to a couple different places and then ended up moving to Kentucky and, and uh, calling that home and been there ever since. So. Well, so hold on just a, a cotton-picking minute here. You, you referred to uh, a county in Oregon. Yeah. So do they do they do that in Oregon? Not really. Uh, I think that's more of a Kentucky thing because the county is about the size of the state here. So you know, because uh, yeah, because that's how we talk about our state. We always yeah. talk about the, the counties and counties mean something. Uh, yeah. We have I think more counties than just about anybody. I'd say so. Yeah, there's quite a bit here, and they're and they're small. You know, in Oregon they're they're massive, and but uh, yeah, that's so I'm used to that lingo here, so it's kind of carried over. But yeah, uh, I was born out in out in Corvallis down there, and on the foothills of the mountains down there. And uh, it's kind of weird, you know, somebody from Oregon coming into this kind of music out ended up out here. So, yeah, it sure you know. is. And did, did you actually uh, learn about this kind of music out there? Uh, yeah, I heard it out there. Uh, I had a teacher in school that played uh, bluegrass. It was, uh, wasn't old time, but it was bluegrass. And that was kind of the first time I ever really remember hearing it. I was in fifth, uh, no, I was in like first grade or something like that, first, second grade. And uh, and that was the first time, but didn't really care much about it at the time. And then we moved out here and started listening to it more, you know, because there's a lot more of it out here. And then I got into it and started listening to, you know, the old records, Ralph Stanley and, yeah, and yeah. Stanley Brothers and uh, Wade Maynard and the Mountaineers and stuff like that. And just really got into it, dove deep in it. And, you know, I was obsessing about it for <laughs> a good two years, you know, <laughs> just anything I get my hands on. I so. can't imagine that. Yeah. Uh, so did, did you, was it banjo that you first heard when you, when you go back? I mean, can you remember really? Yeah, it, he was a banjo player, the, the teacher at the school I was yeah. at, and I, I thought it sounded awesome. And, uh, I, you know, I, I thought that'd be pretty hard to pick up. So I tried to pick up the fiddle first, and uh, that was way harder. And I, <laughs> I kind of quit for a while, and uh, it just wasn't, wasn't uh, matching up good with me. And then uh, my parents got me a banjo for Christmas, and... I was just at it 24-7, you know. So 10 years ago? Uh, yeah, it'd be uh, yeah, somewhere in 2010 or 11, somewhere in there, is when I got my first banjo and started playing. And uh, I learned the three-finger at first and uh, started working on that. And then a guy from uh, down in Nashville area, uh, Leroy Troy, he taught me how to play uh, claw hammer style. And that's where I went with ever since. So, yeah. Leroy Troy. Yep. Seems like I tried to get him on this program one time. Probably have, yeah. He's he plays all over, and he's uh, he's big with Marty Stewart and all those guys down there. Uh, he's been on Marty Stewart's show several times, but he's a great banjo player. He learned from Cordell Kemp, and he learned from Uncle Dave Macon. So it's a it's a good little heritage line they have going on there. So well, we're not we're not accustomed to hearing um, you know Clawhammer style played on you know with a resonator. Yeah. We usually hear it with open back. Yeah, I, I used to play open back quite a bit, and uh, everybody would make fun of my banjo at these bluegrass festivals, sure. you know, so uh, <laughs> I kind of had to compete a little bit for sound, you know. So well, I, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, because you can get drowned out at those festivals, and because that, you know, a lot of those festivals, <laughs> it's just, you got like eight guitar players there, and five mandolin players, and, and it's just you. And with the open back, it doesn't really work too well. So I used to play open back. Actually, this one was an open back. And I put this resonator on it. So, what do you think it is about about the uh, that that style of banjo playing that that made you gravitate to it over uh, you know over Scrug style? Uh, I think the sound of it. I just I like the drive of it. I liked better. I liked how it just just had a unique sound, you know. And everybody does a Scrug style. I like to kind of be different sometimes. And you know, I heard the Scrug style a lot. That was the first style I heard. And uh, when I first heard the claw hammer. Uh, I was like, wow, you know, what is that? And I started looking into it, and, and uh, you know, and the Scruggs was not really working too well with my fingers. You know, I was, I was kind of hard picking up on some of the stuff, so I thought I'd give Clawhammer a try. 
and uh, you know, it was it fit me better, and I just I like the sound of it. If it's done right, you know, it sounds good. Yeah, know, it so. does fit. It does fit you right, and yeah. and uh, I I like it's it's nice it's nice watching you play that, um, y you know, watching your hand come up off. And yeah, is that yeah. part? Is that I've I've seen that before. Is that part of what uh, sort of helps you find that sort of body connection with the music? Yeah, uh, that, that, you know, when I get into it, uh, it's fun to go up the neck. You know, it's kind of the showmanship thing. That's uh, some of the stuff Leroy would do, uh -huh. and uh, you know, Uncle Dave. They would do more than me. I can't do that. They would flip the banjo and stuff when they were sitting down, and <laughs> I can't do that stuff. I'm not that good, but uh, you know, I try to get a little fancy with it. I know String Bean and, and guys like that did that. You know, it's a kind oh, of yeah. the showmanship to kind of keep folks interested because I know if you keep listening to it a long time, it gets kind of repetitive. So kind of mix it up a little bit. You know? Well, yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, uh, we're not going to fall asleep. You, you do fine. You, <laughs> well, we don't, we don't need hey. to do any of that, any of that shtick. We don't need any of that stuff here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, tell, tell us about, uh, tell us about uh, where you, where you landed in, in Perryville. Yeah, Perryville, you know, it's a small little town down in the western part of Boyle County. And, uh, and tell people where Boyle County is in relationship to Lexington, Kentucky, uh, so they can look south, on their maps. Uh, it'd be southwest, probably about uh, 40 miles southwest of uh, Lexington. Um, about an hour drive down there south of Harrodsburg and uh, down on 68 and uh, it's just a little town it's got uh, two gas stations and a furniture store and, and even Dollar General on the outside of the town and but yeah we uh, <laughs> we enjoy it we got a farm about two miles outside of town and uh, we farm cattle and been doing that for uh, a year since we bought our farm uh, me and my wife we bought our own farm and been using cattle and we got chickens out there but yeah parables uh, I had a battle back in the Civil War there. I think that's what Perryville's probably most famous for. Yeah, tell people. You, you, I, I primed you for this. Yeah, I'm, I'm the history the expert yeah, at so Perryville Battlefield, you know, but no. Yeah, uh, no, that, tell us. Yeah, tell, tell folks uh, who are listening from other places who don't know about the significance of that battle. Uh, can you tell a little bit about it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, that was uh, the biggest battle in the state. I think uh, they had 7,000 casualties there uh, in 1862, and uh, it was neither side won. But they both ended up retreating, and uh, the Confederates ended up going back to Tennessee. And uh, but it was the last big battle of, for Kentucky to keep the state in Union hands. And uh, but it was, uh, I think it was over water is what they were fighting for. Uh, there was a creek down there, uh, uh, Doctor's Creek, and then there's a Chaplin River that runs through. And there was a big drought going on at that time, and so they were trying to look for water, and that's how they ended up meeting up in that area, and uh, ended up having a pretty nice sized battle I mean it was the biggest one in the state and uh, but there's a it's a beautiful spot over there it's about two miles outside of town and uh, but it happened in uh, 1862 I believe wow took place yeah oh that's great thanks yeah, yeah. and and so uh, you say it's a beautiful spot out there what, what can you what can you do out there if you're visiting uh, there's some trails out there it's the uh, most well-preserved battlefield in the nation uh, right now and uh, they've done a lot of work on, on keeping all the trails. They got uh, native grasses put back in there. They got a quail reserve over there. So it, they've done they've done wonders at the place. I mean, it looks almost identical to how it would have looked back during the battle. And they've done a great job on keeping that up. A lot of the old buildings are still there. So some of them are privately owned, but uh, I mean, you can still see them off the road. And I mean, it's it's beautiful down there. So, huh. so mu music for you, um, uh, something is it? Do you, do you call it hobby? Uh, yeah, I, I guess it has been. I mean, I done it full time for about a year, and uh, but I, you know, I like doing it as a hobby, you know, because I got I'm working on a farm and such. You know, it's hard to hard to travel around a lot. I travel around with my buddy and and uh, my wife and my sister a lot, and uh, we got some other buddies from Tennessee that come up with us sometime, and and uh, so we just, you know, when we got a when we got a slot, we'll fill it in. You know, if somebody asks us to, you know, uh, play a wedding or something, you know, we've we've done that and. But uh, yeah, it's mostly right now it's a hobby, but you know it's uh, it's good to keep it that way because I like farming too much. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, what do you like about farming? Uh, you know, I I've been doing it for a long time. You know, growing up, and uh, and once it's in you, I mean, it's pretty much in you, and uh, I just enjoy it. You know, we got about 15 cows right now, and so we're running them, and but I I like it being out there with them, and I, you know, I can get back away from everybody and just kind of you know relax on a farm you know? yeah yeah and so. you guys go to uh you guys take your stuff to the farmer's market you sell your you sell uh, your, we, your beef and chicken there we did uh for a while yeah we just got back back into it a year ago uh we got our own farm but uh a few years ago we did we'd go up to like oldham county and, and shelby county and stuff and 
and in Lancaster and, and sell over there. So we sell sweet potatoes and stuff over there. So yeah, just whatever whatever we were growing at the time or raising. So you ever play? You ever bring uh, bring your instruments and play some music at the yeah? At that's the, actually uh, uh, actually how I got started is uh, at the farmers market. Uh, me and my brother we would uh, we were raising chickens at the time and uh, we'd take them to the farmers market. And we were just we brought our instruments along. And we were just sitting there in our booth playing. Some guy came by, dropped us a twenty. I'm like, hey, this is pretty good. So we <laughs> sat outside and uh, outside our booth and had our cases open and and uh, we'd make enough money to go crack a barrel afterwards and get some to eat and uh, still have enough money left over. So that's what got our start. And uh, we're like, hey, maybe we're good enough to kind of you know advertise and play some more places. And that's what we started doing. So yeah, that's uh, that's kind of how we got our start. Oh, that. that's so, cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's an important part of your begin. Nice, nice sort of yeah, it's a farm music c connection. Yeah, right? it's it's uh, so that's kind of you know that's a n nice little connection how we did that. But, but you've gone from you've gone from chicken to mostly beef now. Yeah, mostly beef. We got a few chickens right now, but I mean at one point we were running like 400, 500 chickens. Not a ton, but you know enough to sell some leftovers. And why why'd you make the shift? Uh, it was it was getting a little expensive to raise the chickens. You know, feeding them and everything. So it was feed prices. And uh, I mean, with cattle, you just have the, the hay for them. So, you huh. know, you got to get grain and everything, corn, and the feed prices were just outrageous with the chickens. So, oh, wow. and a lot of work, a lot of work involved. So, yeah, like what? Well, we, we would butcher them ourselves. We'd take them to UK the, the, uh, to their little uh, farm up there and uh, we got our licenses and we'd go there. I mean, it'd take us a weekend to butcher, you know, 400 of them. And so, you know, that gets old after a while. <laughs> after. After every three months going down there and doing that, so we just decided to call it good and go with the easy ones. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Hey, folks, we're talking with uh, Elias Delbridge, and he's here with a um, uh, couple of folks who he picked up somewhere, and we'll learn more about that, and, and then a couple other folks who yeah, we, we know yeah. where he picked them up because they're his family members. <laughs> so uh, we are glad to have Elias and folks with us tonight on Red Barn Radio. Uh, welcome them back now. Elias Delbridge. Just fiddle on banjo if you want to get down on it, that's fine. Can you give me a D real quick? This one, uh, this is a tune I call Dry Fork. I named it after the creek that runs through Parable. The original tune is uh, called Last Chance, but uh, I like the name I gave it better, so <laughs> we'll just call it that. Ready? Let's go on A and let's do some Cotton Eye Joe. I'm going to have my uh, sister uh, do some fiddling for us. Uh, she's been playing for about as long as I have and uh, 
she does that old time fiddling and it sounds pretty good and when I first uh, heard that I was going to be playing here I called up my, my favorite fiddle players and uh, they weren't able to make it so I got them to so, <laughs> now nah, I'm just joking I, I really love having them they uh, it's good to have family play with you can you give me a A there Josh All right, here's one called Cotton Eye Joe. Way down yonder a long time ago, Daddy worked a man called Cotton Eye Joe. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? Scratching out dough. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? Thank you. All right, we're going to do uh, an old timer here. Uh, it's called Trouble on My Mind. Back in 
bad thing about playing banjo is uh, I spend most of the time trying to stay in tune or uh, getting in the key that we're playing in because it's about every key we switch, I got to retune. This one, uh, I don't think we've ever done this one in public before, so uh, we'll just see where it goes. Got Matt over here on bass. So hopefully it'll sound better. Back to some more music with Elias Delbridge and his band. I wanted to tell you that coming next week to Red Barn Radio's live stream is Shannon Clark and the Sugar. Hailing from rustic, dark county, Ohio, this family band writes and performs their original music about a personal loss, struggles, and the human condition. Apple News raves the raw emotion of Shannon's vocal delivery exposes the bittersweet beauty of his lyrics. Husband and wife duo Shannon and Brittany Clark joined the Warp Tour, actually, to represent Ohio in the mid-2000s. Uh, soon after, though, tragedy hit the family with the loss of their second daughter, and for uh, a time, the music stopped. Um, but then Shannon and Brittany's creative songwriting would become the healing tool that brought them together and revived the band. When their oldest daughter, Navy, joined in 2019 as a vocalist and an instrumentalist, uh, they began experimenting with a new sound, and Shannon Clark and the Sugar was born. So we are so glad that they're going to be coming uh, to Lexington to be with us. That's next week on Red Barn Radio, the weekly program that's been bringing you Roots Music Southern Style for nearly 20 that's 2 0 years. Let's get back to tonight's Red Barn Radio program. We come to you live on our social media platforms, broadcasting from the Arts Place Performance Hall here in the great city of Lexington, Kentucky. Please welcome back Elias Delbridge to the Red Barn stage. All right, here's a little, uh, here's a little pig in a pan. Want to give me a D chord real quick? Hey. 
Make them biscuits, darling, bake them golden brown. When I get my breakfast, babe, I'm Alabama bound. I've got a pig home and a pen corn to feed him all. All I need is a pretty little gal to feed him while I'm gone. How do you think I know? Tell her by the pink and gown, hanging down so low. I've got a pig home and a pen, corn to feed him all. All I need is a pretty little gal to feed him while I'm gone. Got a pig home and a pin corn to feed him all. All I need is pretty little gal to feed him when I'm gone. Folks, thank you. All right, we're going to do a little tune. Uh, I think we'll just do it, uh, we'll do it in A and G. We'll just do it in G. We'll mix it up a little bit. Here's uh, one that we did, uh, I think, probably about six years ago, five, six years ago at the Kentucky State Fair. And uh, we entered a competition up there and uh, got second place and, uh, out of uh, two groups. So it was. <laughs> 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 No, we, uh, I th there was a few over there, but, uh, you know, we, we were aiming for the gold, but, uh, you know, we did, we'd only been playing for like five months, so I think we did pretty good, <laughs> and, uh, but uh, this one's an old timer called uh, Shouting on the Hills of Glory. Shouting on the hills of glory, shouting on the hills, shouting on the hills, they'll be shouting on the hills of glory, shouting on the hills of God. Shouting on the hills of God, shouting on the hills of glory, shouting on the hills, shouting on the hills, they'll be shouting on the hills of glory, shouting on the hills of God. Stop and make your reservation. Shouting on the hills of God. Shouting on the hills of glory. Shouting on the hills. Shouting on the hills. Shouting on the hills of glory. Shouting on the hills of God. Yeah. Shouting on the hills, they'll be shouting on the hills of glory. 
this one's a probably one of my favorite songs uh, growing up, and uh, it's got a lot of drive to it. Um, it's called Shout Little Lula. so used to not uh, announcing the names of songs. When I worked uh, down at Dollywood, the producer down there wouldn't ever want us to announce the songs. He said people didn't care what you were singing. <laughs> just sing it. So, just do it. Yeah, just do it. And so uh, I got yeah, to get used to announcing the songs. So Got to come up with something to say about it. All right. We're going to try this one. Shout little Lula. Let me make sure I'm in key. If you're just joining us, you, uh, you aren't only listening to Elias Delbridge, who's there playing all that banjo, but there's other people up on the stage with him. And uh, it, I think it's just about time we, uh, we learned about some of those folks. Um, you heard uh, Elias reference, for instance, that his sister is here, his, his favorite violinist of all time. Um, and there's also... Um, there's also some others here. Uh, Josh Wrinkle is well. Actually, let me let me start with uh, let me start with you, Matthew, because you're closest to me. So we'll work uh, we'll work across the stage. Matthew is here. Uh, he's holding a mandolin now. But um, if uh, if you've been watching the live stream, which I hope you are, I guess you are if you're listening to me talk right now. Um, he's playing also on that washed up bass. You look like you're working so hard over there on that thing. You want to flip it over after the show's done and take a bath in it. Yeah, uh, well, Josh told me I shouldn't have worn a flannel in June, and I think he's right, but uh, uh -huh. yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, hey, uh, would, you mind, I know you, would you mind putting the mandolin down sure. for a second? And just uh, give, uh, give listeners a little sample of what that sounds like by itself, because it's, we, you, know how the, you know how the banjo kind of drowns everything out, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, no, uh, no give, give people a sense of, of what that actually sounds like. So it's kind of hard. To, it's kind of hard to actually hear a note. A note in there. I mean, you, you, it's like the, it's like the tone is sort of implied. 
but like if I said to you right now, could you play a D on there? <laughs> or could you play a tune on that instrument? <laughs> That's why we put them on that. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they Whoops. put me on that. So, no. Um, well, when the music kind of gets going, I can kind of gauge it to uh, close yeah. to the note. Um, but to get it, like, spot on, it's just, like, it's super difficult. Well, well, well <laughs> I haven't been the, playing it that long either. And so. that's kind of the point anyway, right? I mean, uh, of, of that instrument mm -hmm. is if, if it was spot on, if you're going to play it spot on, you may as well just play a regular bass, right? Yeah. I mean, here you get that big fat yeah drum yeah it's almost kind of like a you know just that thump part of it which with the upright bass you have that but you have a little bit of a note behind it too yeah um but this is just more kind of that old school just thump yeah part, right so. and, and, and an instrument that um i mean you know all families mm -hmm. in in rural areas had wash basins uh not all families necessarily had access to a sears or someplace where they could get a bass if they didn't have one and yeah actually Eli, he had to Clean this one out uh, just about a couple weeks ago to get this ready. So he was he was using it. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't want to know what yeah. he was using. It for. That was not. Did, Luckily, that did it was for chickens. So I had baby chicks. So I'll oh, put them in there. Yeah. okay, all right. Uh, Everybody Matt's likes trying baby to make me out look bad here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so hey, uh, tell us tell us a little bit more about you and your mandolin, and and do you play music with uh, with other folks too? Yeah. So uh, well, I. I grew up in Breathitt County, born, Breathitt, and, okay. born and raised, yeah. and um, I did not grow up in a household of bluegrass music. It just wasn't, my dad is more classical, and my mom was a church pianist, and so that was more kind of the music. Um, but when I was about 12 years old, my mom gave piano lessons, and some of her students brought three CDs. One was uh, Third Time Out, Paul Williams and the Victory Trio, and Blue Highway, and oh, man, I just burnt those CDs up. I just was playing them over and over and over and over again, and I just fell in love with the music. So when I was 13, I saved up a little bit of money, bought a little cheapo uh, Rogue mandolin. Yeah, right. And I just started teaching myself because um, I didn't really have many people to play with that you know could play bluegrass. But I just fell in love with it. And then when I was about 16, um, there's a local radio station there, and there's this group that was playing music. And I noticed they didn't have a mandolin player, so I went up to them Come and I on. said, uh, do you all have a mandolin player? And they're like, no. Uh, can you play mandolin? I'm like, well, not really, but I want to <laughs> learn. So they're like, well, come to the back. So they were playing at 5 o'clock. It was about 4.30. We went to the back. They handed me a Gibson mandolin. Oh, come on. And said, try it out. And then they're like, all right, you're good. Come on. So we went live on the radio at 5 o'clock. And that was kind of the start of it. I couldn't even drive. They would come and pick me up and take me and play music and stuff and so that's kind of where it started and then when I got old enough um, Kentucky School of Bluegrass in Hyden yeah it's only about an hour away so I, I got a little bit of scholarship and went down there and started taking lessons and stuff uh, from Scott and Bobby and some of them so that's kind of where it started but I still got a long ways to go but did you meet the May brothers down there the yep. Mays uh, the uh, the May kids, no, 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 I mean, uh, yeah, we have some folks who've been on the show before. Who, okay, yeah, right, right, right. Wow, that's yeah. cool. That's a great story. So this like immediate meteoric rise to fame happened, uh, and you hadn't even performed out before. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, that's great. You're a nice player, yeah. and great to have you here. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah thanks here. a lot. It's fun, fun story. Uh, and then uh, over there on guitar is Josh Wrinkle. Um, I told Josh when he came in that I only remembered the last three letters of his last name, and he said, well, you can just call me Kel. Yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Hey, but Josh, um, people out there are wondering, well, how'd you get to play guitar so good? And um, I guess um, one thing we could tell them, right, is that you, you played a lot of guitar, and you've actually performed with uh, folks here on Red Barn before. Yeah, I guess I was on Red Barn in probably uh, 2000. 2008, I think. It's been a it's been a long time. 2008, ago. boy, I don't think Adam on the camera over there was even born then. <laughs> yeah, I, I, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I already feel old hanging with these ones. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, 2008, I think it was in Midway. Yeah, uh, right, yeah, right. With uh, Tommy Brown and the County Line Grass. Ed, do you remember that? Yep. Back in Midway, yeah. Yep. So we yeah we had shows in Midway, Kentucky. At that old theater there yep, for a while, that and that was a pleasure beautiful doing that. Yeah, it's a it is a beautiful. That's a pretty town. Place. 
It's a beautiful place yeah. to visit for anyone who comes yep. to Kentucky to, to stop in Midway. Um, well, you're a great uh, great player. Tell us about your guitar. Where did that guitar come from? Uh, this is a Preston Thompson guitar made out in Sisters, Oregon. comes from where uh, Eli here is from. Oh, of course. That's why we. That's how Oregon came up yeah. at the yeah. beginning. <laughs> sure enough. Yeah. Yep, but yeah, Preston Thompson guitars out there in Sisters, Oregon. Yeah, that's they a nice, a nice looking instrument. instrument. Yeah, that's a nice Thank instrument. You. And and you, um, I'm sorry, but can you tell tell folks more about the the band that you sort of regularly play with or routinely play with? Yeah, I play with a band that's based uh, out of Sevierville, Tennessee, called the Poe Ramblin' Boys, and uh, we we play full time. Well, up until about spring of 2020, we played full time. Oh, really? What happened then? Oh, uh, there was this little <laughs> virus going around. Oh, oh, right, right, right. Before that, we played about 200 dates in 2019, all over the country and a few other countries and oh no kidding and uh we, we were lucky enough to be on the offer in 2019 and all right get nominated for a grammy and at the beginning uh. of 2020 but uh yeah the poe ramblin boys out of Sevierville, tennessee if you ain't heard of us it's probably best for you but if, if you're <laughs> curious you can look us up it's up to you <laughs> all right hey thanks man um all right good and and so the only other folk uh on the on the floor who we've not yet spoken to or or at least referenced is um is Le now do i call you leah or liana what do you like more you can answer. I think it, liana is, like my real name. is that so okay all right good so um hey liana how'd you meet uh, elias Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, can you come up to one of the mics in the middle there? Thanks. Is yeah. That better? Yeah. That, oh, that's a whole lot better. Okay, I'll stand up real tall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You can pull it down to yourself if you like. Okay, that's all right. I don't want to mess with it. Nah, you're good. Okay, that's good. No sweat. All right. Um, we almost got to meet at Christians at the Capitol, and that would have been a much better story. But we didn't get to meet at Christians at the Capitol because we were on opposite sides. And so I actually, what? on opposite sides of Christians at the Capitol in Frankfurt. Okay. And so anyways, but I took pictures there and I actually ended up getting his dad. It's a really weird story. No, it's all right. I ended up getting his dad in the back of one of my pictures. Like I was taking pictures of people who had scripture signs. Uh -huh. And I got his dad in the background. And his sister was looking at like posts from the <laughs> from the Christians of the Capitol thing, yeah. and she saw my post and she was like, "Whoa, this person got our dad in the back." And then she actually, I don't want to say stalked, <laughs> but <laughs> but I wouldn't want to think that there was any stalking <laughs> going on at Christians she at the Capitol. She looked at my page and she was like, "This girl actually looks really great," and basically told Elias about me and then he ended up adding me as a friend and I messaged him immediately because I saw that he worked for Dolly Parton at the time and I wanted his job so I said <laughs> how did you get your job so we started messaging and I said well it would be really great to play with you sometime at church so then the next time he messaged he said well I can come this Sunday so w he came that Sunday to my church that like the next Sunday and um, we actually didn't really talk to each other at all. The first time we met, we just ran on the pulpit. They were a little bit like running late. And so we just ran on the pulpit, got our instruments out and started playing first thing. We did not even speak. <laughs> and then we sat next to each other in church, but it's a pretty odd story. <laughs> no, it's a great story. And the rest is history. Yes, and absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so um, earlier on when, um, when I was talking with Elias and, and he said he said something like um, you know he always he always likes to do things his own way or likes to do things different I noticed you you were sort of laughing back there smiling back there um, yes. <laughs> does that make him difficult to live with and um, no. do you sometimes wonder if no <laughs> no I love it so much I think we're both really eclectic so we both if we see everybody is doing something we're like no we have to do something else so yeah. we really love it for sure we, we both do things a little bit different nice so. that seems that seems healthy um, nice to meet you when, when did you start uh, playing the violin so that's a little bit interesting story too. So I actually did not want to play a violin at all. I did not want to play because I started piano as a kid and I did not like it. And they had done a orchestra group in my middle school. And my mom said, oh, you have to join the orchestra. <laughs> this is gonna be amazing. And I was like, absolutely not. Yeah, so she right. asked the counselor, she said, if she hates it, 
in two weeks can she get out of it? And obviously I loved it, so I didn't get out of it. Um, and so obviously, like you said, the rest is history. I'm a, I am was a music, music education major at Western Kentucky. I just graduated in 2020. Finally got to have my graduation, like walk the line All and everything. Right. Congratulations. Thank you. Wow, <laughs> so anyway, obviously I really liked it. And that's actually one thing I think is really interesting about our playing. Like, I don't know if people could hear or whatever, but like the way I was playing was a little bit like more like smooth and like a little bit maybe like a cello, you might say, um, kind of in the background. Bigger bow strokes. Yes, yeah, bigger bow strokes, you know. And so I love playing with Maddie because we literally play like very opposite. You see a lot of groups and they have two people that are either very classically trained or they might have a couple very fiddle, fiddle type people. And I think they're both really great sounds. So I love our group because it is really unique that, and me and Maddie are constantly teaching each other like, different techniques and different ideas. She shows me Boeing's all the time. Like, I love how differently trained we are because she's very fiddle, like not very much like looking at notes. And then obviously I have a very more classical background, but I mean, we both play by ear a lot too. So huh. it's really fun. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's cool. Um, so uh, Elias, actually, if you wouldn't mind stepping up too. No, you don't need to go away, okay. Leanna. Um, so I wonder if you guys could tag team this question. Um, you know, uh, many, if not most of our listeners have, have heard about uh, tent meetings where you all have played uh, music before or, and maybe regularly do still, but, but a, a lot of folks have, have heard about them but never actually attended one. Um, I gather these meetings would happen uh, after the workday, right? So that families could, could yeah. attend, yeah. Can you tell us, uh, talk to us a little bit about that? Because it, um, just wonder if you could set that scene a little bit for us and explain, you know, what someone would experience there. Yeah, uh, that's uh, kind of step up to the mic if you don't mind. Yeah, sorry. That's right. uh, yeah, we kind of got our start doing that, uh, and like you said, it was, you know, it's they usually start around seven o'clock somewhere in there. And uh, the first one that I remember going to was down in Houstonville, Kentucky, uh, down in Lincoln County, and uh, at We'd go there and, you know, you'd have all the chairs set up and just be like a regular church service, except it'd be, you know, out in the tent. And uh, but electricity. Uh, yeah, they would yeah. bring a lot. Most of the places. Yeah, that yeah. we played at, uh, you know, because that's where I kind of we got got our start was playing at churches and tent meetings and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and on a lot of tent meetings, there was like a good two, three years there where we were playing a lot of tent meetings and, you know, all over central Kentucky. And but, yeah, I mean, it was it, it's a different atmosphere having it. Oops, sorry. It's a different atmosphere having it, you know outside you know having the services out there but it's just i like it you know it's really humid out you know because a lot of them are in the summer and and uh, early late spring and and it's really neat it's a good it's a good atmosphere and we've we've played quite a few and uh you know, we, we used to go and because that's what we kind of cut our teeth on was playing at churches and you know, it was a big part of our you know obviously we met at church right, so we you both know. started at playing at churches i played at tent meetings before we met my dad would play he would bring the keyboard and play piano for tent meetings and i would play with him and then obviously they started out doing tent meetings so we both obviously play a lot at church and yeah. i love the atmosphere at tent meeting it's just so like old timey it's so nice and a lot of times they have different groups coming in i know for us they would have you know unique groups not just the church they would have like the church and then we would have like a guest people guests coming and a lot of bluegrass music so that's a lot of fun and you might play afterwards too like we would practice oh, right. but the other groups after after it was over and that was really fun too yeah. so yeah. so are that were the uh those kind of tent meetings more um more music oriented or was there also uh was there also someone sort of in the pulpit giving uh giving a, a lesson or um you know that that kind of thing too. Was there also uh, sort of a message Definitely with it as well? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So they would have music at the beginning, like he said, kind of like a church service. Obviously, like yeah. a church we'd service. we'd play so. at the beginning, and then they'd have the guy preach, and and mm -hmm. then a lot of times, you know, at at the end of like these tent meetings, you know, there'd be a lot of guys that hang mm -hmm. around. I mean, sure, Matt's been to stuff like this yeah. where like, you know, people will bring their instruments even if they're not playing, and you know, everybody would gather around for like right. hours and and play. You know, it's just anybody that could play. They get around a big old circle and just play music. So that's that's where a lot of it, you know. It, it, I enjoyed it. It's really fun. It's really Usually really associated with one church, with a particular church, or was it just sort of an outdoor, an, an outdoor um, service that a ch local church put on? Was it were they traveling? Sometimes traveling. Uh, the ones that I've been I've been to, there was a couple that the guy did it all across like the state, and uh, but most of them were just like local churches putting them on. 
and uh, they would, you know, just invite everybody in the community to come out. And uh, some of them would get pretty decent sized, and you know, you get you have to get a bigger oh, yeah. tent on some of them. Yeah, yeah. a lot of times for ours, you have to bring like your own camping chairs yeah. and or bring like blankets to sit like outside the tent if it's good weather, because all the seats will be full. So that sounds really, uh, really nice. Oh yeah, yeah. it's Great. awesome. Yeah. Everybody yeah. should go if you have a chance. All right. To go. Well, I, I think more people will want to oh, because yeah. of the way you guys described it. Um, okay, and unrelated, but but also uh, something I'm curious about is Dollywood. Can you um, can you tell us about uh, Elias how how it is that you happen? Oh, thanks, Leanna. Um, how you happen to uh, land in Dollywood and what is that like? Yeah, well, uh, I grew up. You know, Dolly Parton's my aunt. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I, there was an ad out that they needed some musicians down there, and uh, so I. Uh, sent them a message and they emailed me back said that they were taking auditions down at Dixie Stampede and uh, so I went down there and and auditioned and I did the old claw hammer stuff for him and and uh, he was you know filming it and everything and so I was like here it is you know this is what I play and they're like that's kind of what we're looking for and because wow. they wanted to do kind of like more of an old time type of deal because yeah. uh, it was for their lumberjack show they were doing at the time uh, but uh, I went back home and didn't hear from him for like two months and I was like I guess I didn't get the job and one day I was I was painting and uh, in a at a animal hospital I was just doing some side work and I was painting and he called me and uh, he's like hey do you want the job and I was like yeah let's do it so I went down there the next week found an apartment and moved down and uh, it was the first time I moved out of the house I was 19 and uh, moved to East Tennessee and uh, lived uh, in a little town called Seymour Tennessee oh, come on. and uh, yeah and so we uh, uh, I moved down there and took my dog with me and and. I was playing there for about a year, and then they shut the show down uh, in 2017. That was 2016, and they closed the show down, and they did a whole different show, and they didn't need live music anymore. So, so did did you ever meet Her Highness? Yeah, I did. Yeah, because uh, it was the first show that they did at that uh, that uh, dinner theater, and uh, so she showed up for that first show. I remember the first time I met her, I was backstage, and uh, I was kneeling down. I, I was just kind of goofing around, you know, just playing some stuff, and. Uh -huh. She walked behind me and she patted me on the shoulder oh, and she's right. like, "Sounds good, buddy." And uh, yeah, I was like, "Ooh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah." So and then uh, we, I met her a couple times after that and I uh, got my picture with her and stuff. And so she's super nice lady, from what I, you know, she's she's short, you know, but uh, she's shorter than me. And uh, you wouldn't mind send, send me one of those pictures so I can Photoshop it a yeah, little bit and yeah. uh, just you know, put my. Uh, <laughs> hey, folks, we are with Elias Delbridge and uh, his family members and friends, and they're playing here on Red Barn Radio tonight. Great to have you guys here. There's more music to come. We've got uh, a good set ahead, so let's get back to the music with Elias right. Delbridge. Uh, thank you, folks. Uh, this one, uh, speaking about tent meetings and, and uh, you know, playing at churches and stuff, this is one that I did a lot, and we did quite a bit at uh, tent meetings and uh, I think we, we played at the Boyle County Jail a few times in North Point Prison for the guys down there and uh, we played this song and uh, it was a it was a big hit for uh, for a lot of the churches we played at and uh, it's called uh, Living the Right Life Now. Night is past, it's morning at last, no longer in fear I'm bound. All wanderings are done, the part of it won, I'm living the right life now. Yes, glory to God, I'm washing his blood, the sunlight is on my brow. I'm happy and whole, there's peace in my soul, I'm living the right life now. Jesus. 
us today the right life is for the blessed. Come out of the night, come into the light, where souls are so freely blessed. Yes, glory to God, I'm washing his blood, the sunlight is on my brow. I'm happy and whole, there's peace in my soul, I'm living the right life now. in the east and looks like rain looks like rain boys looks like rain out in the east and looks like rain and i'm on my long journey home lost all my money but a two dollar bill two dollar bill boys two dollar bill lost all my money but a two dollar bill and i'm on my long journey home Train, boy, surely is a train. Black smoke rising, surely is a train, and I'm on my long journey home. Lost all my money, but a two dollar bill, two dollar bill, boys, two dollar bill. Lost all my money, but a two dollar bill, and I'm on my long journey home. Money but a two dollar bill, two dollar bill, boys, two dollar bill. Lost all my money but a two dollar bill, and I'm on my long journey home. Right. Thank you, folks. Uh, I'm gonna do one here with uh, just the banjo. I know you guys are probably sick of hearing the banjo, but uh, it's all right. But uh, <laughs> yes, there's one little Maggie here. I do this one uh, in the old school tuning. I believe they call it the sawmill tuning. And uh, it's kind of the way they used to do it back in the mountains. Stands little Maggie with the banjo in her hand. She's drinking away her troubles and according another man. Can I ever stand it to see the 
those two blue eyes, a shining in the moonlight, like two diamonds in the sky. I saw little Maggie She was sitting by the banks of the sea With the 44 around her And a banjo on her knee Eli Delbridge for being with us this evening. We also thank our volunteers and staff for their help in making our production happen each and every week. Thank you all for listening to our webcast, watching us on YouTube and Twitch, and those listening to us on the network of Red Barn stations and media worldwide. Thanks to WEKU, Red Barn Radio's official radio partner, NPR for Central and Eastern Kentucky. Listen online at WEKU.org. It's your chance to hear more great live music from Red Barn Radio and WEKU. Those of you here in the Central Kentucky area, guess what? You should be sure to check out Red Barn TV, our weekly program of music now on ABC 36, WTVQ. Red Barn Radio comes to you from our home, the Arts Place Performance Hall in downtown Lexington, Kentucky. Our website has updates and further information on our guests and our program. We are on the web at redbarnradio.com. And now I think we might be able to get these folks to come back and do one more tune for us. Let's welcome back Eli Delbridge and his troupe to the Red Barn stage. Thank you, guys. Shoes are nearly gone. Wore out. Just a little ways ahead, there's no farm or shed. That's where I rest my weary bones. 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 That's where I rest my weary bones. Just a little ways ahead, there's no farm or shed. That's where I rest my weary bones. Shining bright. 
Sadly, that's all for our show for this week. End of our banjo loser for the evening. You can see and hear Red Barn Radio worldwide as we stream live on the web on YouTube and Twitch Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern in North America, and archive performances on Spotify, iTunes, and video on the Red Barn Radio YouTube channel. Be sure to check out our social media for updates to our upcoming schedules and more information on our program. Now, from all of us here at Red Barn Radio, to all of our friends worldwide, it's our hope that you have a great week. Keep working together to be safe and healthy. And until next time, good night from Red Barn Radio.